Welcome to ODC. Today we have an award winning translator, Mr. N. Kalyana Raman. Welcome to ODC, sir. Translated many master writers like Pony, uh, Ashoka Mitra, Hirman Mahan. Among all the uh, writers who are master in the craft, how different is Devi Bhagavad I think Devi, uh, both Ashoka Mitra and, and Sisu Chalapa were uh, people belonging to a different generation and they made their mark. I think the the, the quality of a writer is in uh, creating something new, you know. He doesn't tell the same story or he doesn't tell it in the same way. I think Devi Bharati is, is very special in that sense. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't traverse the same, uh, same areas of life from one, one story to another, he writes about another thing. So I think that Devi Bharati is, is a very remarkable writer among those writing in Tamil today. Uh, each writer of course has, you know, uh, something special about them. And uh, Devi Bharati's special quality is that uh, he is a modernist. He is uh, very much a modernist. He doesn't uh, make concessions for uh, the traditional perspectives on life. Although the life that he described might be uh, you know, in a traditional setting, you know, in a, in a rural, in a village or in a town, but he looks at it from a very uh, humanistic angle and uh, he tells it like you So that is, uh, that is something quite unique about him. And uh, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't have any ideological, uh, of course, but if you dig deep enough, you can see what he believes in and what he doesn't, but he he's not overtly ideological. Uh, he, uh, he he describes life as it is, and and he writes in such a way and and using such a language that uh, that you can see deep into what he discusses. And it has a very uh, great vocabulary. I've read all the full novel, and it's a very interesting novel. And what about the vocabulary of Mr. Devi Bharati, sir? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, as a translator, I I stick very close to what the original author says. I don't invent anything myself. I may be uh, writing, uh, you know, in, a, in, an, in English, uh, that brings out all the nuances. I mean, that, that's what I try to do. And therefore, everything that you see in the translation, which is, is subtle and which is uh, which is rich uh, in terms of language. Uh, it all comes from the original. So, uh, so I think that uh, that's what he invents a language which is which suits his material. Uh, what he does, and and that that is that's a very special aspect. And it has been recognized by a lot of lot of writers, a lot of his own peers. Has recognized how unique he is. Apart from the authenticity of the story, mm -hmm. the writer introduces some very storytelling techniques, which is like the, using the Ritaro Dormant uh, technique, using the, not using the name of the protagonist. Yeah. So, yeah. how interesting did you find, sir, when translating the novel? You know, I mean, obviously, I. Uh, uh, when I translate a novel, I get very absorbed in it. So I get, uh, you know, it's almost like a, like immersing yourself in it. So uh, I don't see it from a distance. You say, hey, that's interesting. So because you can't tell the story otherwise, you have to tell it from inside the novel. Okay, and and therefore, but you know, when I when I when I read it as as a reader. I can see that uh, he switches between, say, urban and rural, between reality and fantasy, between past and present, very, very fluently. You know, it's, uh, it's amazing the way he does from page to page to page. 
and and you don't feel that there is a disruption in the story. It's all part of the story. Just like you know, just like we as human beings, we are also tending to do that, right? We also switch from fantasy to reality, or between past and present, right? So he does the, I mean he. But the thing is, to do it on on paper, to do it in a story, you need very high level of craft and imagination. That's what that's what Dave Vasi has. How much you enjoy while translating the stories? Very much. Yeah. I, uh, is there any particular moment you enjoyed? Well. No, he doesn't. Doesn't really work that way. Translation is is, is a kind of it's a deliberate uh, exercise because you 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 write one draft and then you you go sentence by sentence and then you make it very well. So, but you know, but the moment you see that is taking shape and sort of uh, it 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 it's sounding like the original. That's when when you feel satisfied. So it comes after a, after. A, uh, uh, a long period of hard work. You have been translating for 20 years and it's very yeah. much appreciated. But by selecting a novel, which will you uh, select in that novel to make it a translation? Whether it is a story or whether it is the authenticity or whether it is the layers or the depth of the story. See, uh, see the thing is that uh, you know the stories that I select or, or, the, or the novels that I select, they are, they are part of the Tamil literary milieu. And they have been read by hundreds of thousands of readers, and, and they have developed their esteem for, for such work. So I'll be selecting only one of them. So it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah. And then the second thing is that I make sure that that, that what I select will be read 10, 20 years from now. It won't be, uh, it won't be a commodity. You know, it has lasting. Literary significance. I mean, that is something up to my judgment, but I haven't failed so far. So, something, something that that is very relevant, that is new, that speaks to the times. That's that's what I look for in, in, a, in a work that I need to talk about. In Tamil, there are plenty of people who are writing such work, so it's not a, so it is. Uh, I'm not, I'm spoiled for choice. Not only me, a uh, lot of all the translators who are translating from Tamil uh, have many, many works to choose from. Very nice talking to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.